Charleston White. Have you ever heard of this guy? Well, if you haven't, just know that he's probably going to be making appearances almost everywhere from this point forward because Aiden Ross has been giving him a platform and he's uh, becoming a little bit more widespread. I'm sure that you guys have probably heard of this character from Abba and Preach or perhaps Fresh and Fit. So I looked into this guy. This guy, um, I've actually watched like two, three interviews after seeing some of this stuff. I'm like, what, what is, what am I watching? And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fresh Fit Podcast, man. We're out of YouTube, Joe, here with Charleston White, man. In the building. <laughs> and so based off of my understanding, Charleston White is either a YouTuber, social media personality, and I even read that he's a comedian. And I saw a bit of his comedy, and uh, I got to say, well, you know, every, comedy is truly subjective. I also heard that he was a youth mentor. And of course, the name of the nonprofit is called Hype which is an acronym for helping young people excel. And I wish I was bullshitting you with this next one, okay? He, st he also started a community with the N-word. I wish I could say the N-word, but I can't because I don't have the N-word pass. And it even stands for something. Never ignorant, getting goals accomplished. I guess that's one way to empower a word that was quite oppressive towards a group of people 100 years ago. Yeah, so that's kind of how I heard about Charleston White. Uh, but nonetheless, the reason why I want to talk about him is because I find him very interesting very peculiar you see as of late he's been coming out on aiden streams and that's kind of how i decided to give him a chance there's a lot of things that he did where i was just like do you even mean any of the things that you say then for instance so you snitch on your own friends i have yeah for what what do you get out of that oh uh, because it's the right thing to do are you f***ing the little no it's not it. Hey, who knew that Charleston White had a uh, moral compass? Usually he's online always just spewing uh, racial slurs, racial statements. I think he's telling the truth when he says that he, he'll he snitch people out because there's evidence of it. There's this rapper by the name of Finesse Two Times that has a son. And this son of his made a video threatening Charleston White. And he sent that video to Charleston and well, the clip that you're about to see is the events that proceeded after he sent that video. Uh, yes ma'am. Uh, I only have rapper names and street names, but I'm sure they're easy to find. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. I want to make a report of child neglect and child endangerment. I got a video that was sent to me, uh, that was made by this child online, uh, making threats. He snitched a kid out to Child Protective Services. I wouldn't be surprised if Charleston snitched out Chuck E. Cheese to the FDA for having rats. And I don't know why, but I just find it so odd that he presents himself as this character who is super badass and talk about just how hateful he is towards other groups of people. Like for instance, I found this clip of him on Instagram Live with I believe his wife or somebody related to him. They called him telling him to get off the live. Hello Charleston. Yeah. I need you to come out there live right Man, I ain't coming off this live. They done called the police on me, and these people need to know they called the police on me. So f a Chinese baby. I hope African Bambada rip every goddamn Chinese baby in New York. Bye-bye. I hope African Bambada rip every goddamn Chinese Yeah, enough of that, all right? And this is where I started to scratch my head and think to myself, you know what, man? Like, what if it is true that he's not what he says he is? Instead, what if he is some other type of person? So I started doing a little bit of digging and there was a lot of things that were quite interesting that I found. I ended up finding an interview of him talking about why he goes on rants about groups of people. Does that mean that you don't actually mean what you say? Oh, uh, no, I don't. I don't mean half the stuff I even talk about. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you hear me talk, yeah, ha half the stuff I'm saying online, I don't I don't really. That's, yeah. Those are not my real personal uh, opinions and beliefs. Yeah. So a lot of what he says. He doesn't exactly mean. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, why do it then? Why even go down that route to make yourself look like a terrible person? He also explains it in that interview, which I thought was very interesting. And it gives you a perspective as to why so many people like Andrew Tate, just pearly things, uh, sometimes even fresh and fit, Sneeko, it gives you perspective as to why they go viral. Mm. Now, listen, Charles, and you're you're very controversial, and you'll say things about people, and you know, intentionally. Go, yeah, intentionally. Yes, ma'am. Why do you do it intentionally? Uh, just as the same as as, as Fifty Cent uh, uh, did to 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 hear his music. Mm -hmm. So so it, it's my belief that nobody who would talk like Dr. King would go viral today. Okay. 
if 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 if, if Dr. King was alive, his videos wouldn't go viral today. Mm -hmm. So you you have to be uh, you have to have some type of theatrics in, in order to to get a message across nowadays. That's why the preacher turn up with the wow mm -hmm. and make the, the the musicians jump on the beat when you get going. So mm -hmm. everybody has to add something, some type of spice. Uh, if you want to be a public figure. So uh, I just choose to play the villain mm -hmm. uh, rather than pretend to be a, a wolf in sheep clothing. Mm. Uh, I'm a sheep in wolf clothing. Which is pretty interesting. However, the thing is, how can anybody take your word if whatever you say, there's like a 50-50 chance that it's real? He's also gone on to talk about how he kills white men, white women. And now that we have this information, I start to think to myself, was any of that real? because he talks about that on Fresh and Fit, and he articulates it as if he actually lived the experience. Hold on, homie, you gotta think about it. We're kids, right? We're kids. Yeah. Mimicking the culture. We <laughs> all would line up in a single file line mm -hmm. and take our turns waxing girls behind. Yeah. Every time it get to me, I was out of luck because I stick my end and it will get stuck. <laughs> the girl will say, stop. I say I'm not. Whoa. The girl will say, "Stop!" I say I'm not. That's enough. Come on, homie. Yeah, no, Damn, I, that's I, a song. So, so, yeah, so, that's a song. So, yeah, so, that, so, so here we are. Crazy. So here we are, kids. Hearing this is no different than when the kids hear Molly's Percocets, yeah. Xanax, yeah. Xanax. Yeah. So, so, so we trying to mimic the culture. Now we yeah. trying to have our trains. Now, if we were to believe Charleston White that he didn't actually do, commit any of these crimes, but instead wanted to provoke some sort of thought, then what he's trying to say here is that there's some sort of indoctrination going on. And this is the lyric that Charleston White was rapping about on Fresh and Fit. If you go ahead and you tap it, which is the one that's highlighted on red, you will see that there's a couple of comments that respond to that specific lyric. And one of them reads, this lyric describes rape, assault. If somebody tells you to stop having sex with them and you don't, that's rape, which is what Charleston was talking about on Fresh and Fit. So Charleston's point on Fresh and Fit is that black people mimic whatever the media indoctrinates them with. This is what was going on during the 80s. And if you take a look at what's going on in the 2000s, specifically 2020 and forward, you will see that a lot of rap songs are about killing drugs like this plagues black communities specifically. and. There's a trend. It's it's an obvious trend in the black community, at least according to the black people that live in those communities. They talk about the struggles. They talk about this in their music. And then Charleston's point on Dee Dee's podcast or radio station, his point is that he needs to be as provocative as possible for people to pay attention to him. Now, I don't know if you consider that genius or not, but that is pretty bold for somebody to go out there and say a bunch of these crazy racial statements but if that's what you have to do in order to get your message across it seems to me like charleston white understands the consequences best of luck to you if that's what you want to do but nonetheless man i kind of want to share that with you guys because i thought it was very interesting when i was looking more into this guy because i couldn't believe that a lot of what he was saying wasn't real um but at the same time i did kind of get the hint that man this is just way too much i gotta look into this guy so yeah i i that's what i ended up finding guys um yeah you guys let me know what you guys think about charleston white before we end the video i want to go ahead and show you guys some lighthearted stuff that i thought was pretty interesting that i saw charleston white and aiden participate in i thought this was absolutely hilarious have you ever had a threesome before never oh do you like threesomes no i only got one dick i'm gonna do it with two with one dick and I don't eat I so white oh, boy, Mr. Oh, white oh, boy oh, lick each other Charleston, hand. Charleston, 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 hand. Charleston, I have hair. Now that's fur. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Yeah, you guys let me know what you guys think about Charleston White. Yeah, and that's uh, pretty much all I have for you guys. And yeah, hopefully you guys learned something today. 